Assalamu alaikum. Peace and blessings to all our participants and viewers today. Welcome to our program, Olive Branch. I'm Nicole. And I'm Fatma. Today we have guests from Universal School present to tell us about the school, which was established in 2001 by the American Muslim community in Western New York. We have Ray Barker and Rayana Azam, who are teachers at Universal School. April Armand is the board member, and Kathy Jamil is the principal. Welcome, everybody. So, Kathy, let's get started with you. Can you give us some background information about how Universal School began? In 2001, some women in the community thought that it would be a good idea to have an option for our students. Um, I had a friend who happened to be a principal at a Catholic school, and she actually was a Catholic nun, and she helped us kind of jumpstart the idea of establishing a school. Okay. Um, the sisters then branched out, and we added more members, started a planning committee, and eventually a school board. And then uh, from then until the past 10 years, we've had a very diverse and uh, energetic school board over the past 10 years now to work on uh, our mission. Okay, great. And we have some teachers here. Can you guys explain some of your curriculum and the academic standards that you guys hold? I am a science and technology teacher. And uh, we follow uh, the New York State uh, standards and syllabus. According to that, the, we follow the same outline in science and in technology as well. And in science, we are teaching all the four branches, that is life science, earth science, and physical science, and space and technology. And in uh, technology also, we are following um, the same uh, outline, which has been given by New York State. And we hold uh, different events. Uh, we hold um, science fair every year. And uh, the kids, they are very enthusiastic about that, and they look forward every year. Though in the beginning they are a little anxious and frightened <laughs> of that, but as the time passes, they, they are really enthusiastic and they learn a lot from that. And Ray? I teach social studies for fifth through eighth grades, and we also, just like science, follow the New York State uh, standards and guidelines, which means fifth grade is a U.S. history class, sixth grade is ancient history and Far Eastern history, and seventh and eighth grades are uh, a two-year U.S. history curriculum just like in public schools. And Ray, you're a non-Muslim. That's and, correct. Um, how did you get involved in universal school? I actually started, I was a student at Canisius College, and there's a service learning component for education students there. And I found universal school on a website. Uh, it was close to my home. I knew nothing about it. I didn't even know the school was there. Uh, so came over and talked to Sister Kathy and Sister April uh, about doing some volunteer work and did do that. Uh, then they were looking for a part-time tutor. I started doing some tutoring. They were looking for a teacher to finish out a year, so I came and did that. And then they were looking for a social studies teacher. So it, uh, that's how I uh, became how long a staff have you been member. With the school now? Uh, two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yes. Okay. Great. And Sister April, um, I know you're a board member of yes. Universal School, so how does Universal School make itself accessible to low-income Muslim families? Well, basically we um, have um, different programs. We participate in the Bison Fund, so there are funds available to help those who uh, may not be able to afford the, the, the tuition that makes it more affordable to them. Okay. Um, so we really uh, try to accommodate um, every student. And can you community. tell us about the diversity of the students at Universal School? Yes, and I think that's one of the, the strong points about Universal School is even though um, you know we are an Islamic school, we have students from all over. We have from Pakistan, India, Turkey, um, Kuwait, so even though they're all Muslim, they all bring just a little bit different flavor. And so the um, students are exposed to that university, and um, I think it's a real strength of the school. Can you talk to us about um, the recent trip Universal School has made to Turkey? Yes, um, two years ago we went to Turkey, and really the, the trip that the students take, we really want it to be kind of um, holistic like the curriculum so we want it to be something that will challenge them intellectually will um, challenge them spiritually and so what they did was they went to Turkey um, they did lots and lots of shopping <laughs> um, but they also visited um, 
many different sites there. They went to visit Hagia Sophia. Um, they went to visit many mosques. Um, they visited, um, you know, they would wake up for f the morning prayer um, and make the morning prayer in, in one of the, the mosques that, that, that are there. So um, they visited um, different restaurants, and so they really had a, a very nice experience. Okay. Um, and they got to, to talk to some of the local people as well. Okay, great. And you recently returned from Umrah as well with the students, right, Sister Kathy? Can, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, last year, um, we were honored to be able to go to Umrah, and that was such a hit that the school said that we we're going to have to do this every year because the students came back with a very long lasting experience, like the trip to Turkey. Mm -hmm. it, it, the intent was to have our eighth graders going on to high school with this lasting memory mm -hmm. of um, of their school and of their of their faith. Okay. And so the trip to Umrah um, was for 12 days, and we visited Medina and Mecca, and they were able to tie in all the stories that they've been hearing for years, and actually see it, and it just gave them that kind of closure that they needed. It just kind of made it feel very real for them. So it was a very amazingly spiritual opportunity for all of us. What other activities or events has Universal School held in the community? And uh, for the community, this week we have a book fair and it's open to the community. We, we do multiple, uh, at, least, at least once a month. There's some kind of event or function that we're doing. The science fair is open to the community. We try to do, um, we network with other universities, colleges, um, public schools, private schools. And we try to do not only interfaith, but we also try to do non-interfaith based activities where our students are with other students. And uh, it, it helps, again, like April had just mentioned, a holistic type of learning. So they're learning many different things. We have the New York State standards, that, as was mentioned, but we want it to be more than just that. And so we try to provide and as many as we can. And have you also participated in community service projects? Yeah, we do have a mandatory, actually, community service project for our middle schoolers, sixth or eighth grade. Our guidance counselor uh, works with the students and plans um, from the beginning of the year a certain amount of hours each student has to do, and they have to do it in different areas in Western New York. And can you guys tell us a little bit about the other teachers at Universal School and their background and their method of teaching? And yeah, we, uh, as uh, Sister April said, that uh, there are different students from different uh, countries, so it's the same with the teachers mm -hmm. as well. So they are from different background, and it's really good to meet each other to share uh, our experiences and get together. So it's it's a very uh, nice, good experience, and you are exposed to so many uh, things, uh, so many knowledge you gain, and you learn so much uh, from others as well. And we have a very friendly atmosphere. Mm -hmm. We interact with each other. We share um, uh, our personal uh, things also, and uh, along with the academics about the students and the school beside that. I'll just add to you that. Think? It was interesting you said that because I, a student who graduated three years ago said, you don't really know about universal school until you leave. You really don't appreciate it yeah. until you leave mm -hmm. because there's certain aspects, and I've heard that over the years repeatedly because, uh, as the, she said, a family environment and that, that loving, innate care for each student, it goes a long way, and they don't forget it. They don't appreciate it as much <laughs> in, in eighth grade, <laughs> but when they leave, it's like, wow, they, oh. were, they really did care. <laughs> so do you guys keep in touch with the students that have left and with the families, and do you guys build a connection with the... We try, and, and it's very important to us, actually, because we it's important for us to see how our students are doing out there. Now, uh, we have a, a grad graduating class, our initial graduating class will be seniors next year. And so it's really important for us to see how they're doing in SATs, how they're doing, um, what colleges mm -hmm. are choosing. It okay. helps us reflect on how we were doing for that foundational stages. Okay, great. And, and I think also, you know, a lot of our kids come I back. We're just going to take a message. Okay. We're just going to take a break after these <laughs> messages and we'll be back. Welcome back, everybody. Before we took a break, Sister April was mentioning how the students who graduate often come back. And Sister April, can you touch on that a little bit more? Yeah, I think uh, most of the students that go to high school, they still have those community service hours. So they oftentimes come back and volunteer at the school. So they work in the classroom, they work in the office. Mm -hmm. um, I've got two daughters in high school. They want to come back. Um, oftentimes they want to sit in the Islamic studies class because they can't get that anywhere else. 
Okay. So it's really nice to see them come back. Okay, great. And I, Sister Kathy, I know um, the goal of Universal School is to go up till 12th grade. So how close are you guys at achieving that goal? Since Sister April has said that a lot <laughs> of students want to come back. That's so true. We have, we stopped, we were adding a year, a grade a year for some time. And then we got to eighth grade, we figured we'll stop and just do what we're doing and try to get it to be better. Mm -hmm. um, and so we took that, what, four year break now? About four years now. So we figured now we can venture towards high school. So just recently, uh, the board approved a high school planning committee. Wow, that's great. And okay. so our okay. committees are supposed to get together in the fall to see what we can do for a ninth grade for next year. Congratulations. Thank that's you. a big achievement. Yeah, thank you. Maybe, inshallah, there'll be universal school college. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be cool. So you'll be entering college teachers. Inshallah. <laughs> So what is the level of competence that the kids are graduating with? Do they, and do they typically go on to public school or private school? It's, uh, uh, it depends. I mean, they are going to both public schools also and private school also. And uh, like these days, the grade eight students, they are talking about, and they are so excited about it. And they do feel that they'll miss their universal school, but they are very excited and enthusiastic. That's, that's a great thing. Right. Yeah. And, and when they come back, they, mm -hmm. they talk about their experiences. And we ask right. them, how's it going okay. in high school? Yeah. And they do mention how well prepared they okay. have been. And they said there was no problem uh, working at a high school level uh, based on what they've done at Universal. Okay. We've had admission recruiters from high schools come to us right now. Oh, okay. Now that we've had some kids go out to the high schools from the okay. private schools. And they try to recruit and they offer student scholarships. Okay. So initially they were like, what is universal school and what have what do they know? And once our students got established in the schools, they were trying to recruit our students. So this year we got a student who almost got a full scholarship to Buffalo Sun, so we're really okay. happy about that. Is it true that there is a graduate from Universal School at fifteen years old and yep, he's he, going on? Yeah, he's going to NYU. Um, he'll be fifteen he is fifteen. Um, he'll be graduating early um, and uh, yeah, he'll be going to New York City in August. It's very Check exciting. Out, yeah. Okay, great. And how has the move been from Heim Road to Genesee Street? Um, it's been challenging in some ways and in a big blessing in other ways. We have more space to grow. We have uh, rooms that we didn't have before, like the gymnasium, which was very critical in terms of physical education. Um, and in terms of uh, safety in the, the neighborhood, it is a challenge because obviously the neighborhood is not the same as Heim Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something that we were not really focused on in the prior years. And this year we really have to think about it critically. Okay. And have a lot of students stopped attending when you moved over there because of the location since it's on the east side? You know, there were some parents who pulled out the first year. Mm -hmm. I have uh, a family who pulled out, and they put them back last year, okay. after our first year. Um, they weren't quite sure. A lot of parents were very unsure. Um, I know the board has really made it a, uh, the priority was safety for them. So that's something that I think the parents feel like they've gone uh, and taken care of uh, for the, uh, the appeasement of the parents. I would like to add to this question that uh, um, because we are at um, this uh, Genesee Street and the space is big, so now we have technology room, the big mm. computer room, <laughs> alhamdulillah, yeah, yeah, and separate yeah. Uh, library, and we have got gym and everything, you know, a very big art room. So that has... Uh, yeah, so great has resources. It's a children. real school in, in a way that the, the Heim facility sort of making it work was sort of making it work as a school. But mm -hmm. this yeah. really is a school. And you walk in and it, it is a real classroom. Right. Uh, having taught in both places, I, this is a big improvement as far as the facilities. And if I was a non-Muslim parent and I wanted to send my child to universal school, would that be OK? We have an open, welcoming policy. We currently do not have any non-Muslim students, but we have talked about that uh, what would we do at the board level and we really feel that we would welcome both non-Muslim as well as Muslim students just like we have non-Muslim teachers as well as Muslim teachers. What kind of extracurricular activities does Universal School offer to students? Right now we have a few after school clubs. We have like an art club and a, and a green team club. That's something that we really are trying to improve on, especially our sports piece in terms mm -hmm. of after school activities. Um, the location is challenging for parents. There's into transportation for late busing. Um, and those are, are, and then the neighborhood that we're in also um, poses uh, an issue for some pa families because they don't want their kids playing outside in that neighborhood at certain times of the day. So those are some challenges that we're really trying to brainstorm to see how we can overcome them. 
Okay. And is Universal School affiliated with any mosque? No, we're not affiliated with any mosque. Uh, Alhamdulillah, as Ibn said about the diversity, diversity in ethnicity, but also in geographic. We're from all over, all over Western New York, so everyone attends, you know, different masjid. Uh, we are attached to masjid. Our facility is attached to masjid, which is a huge benefit to us because our kids get to pray their prayers in the in the mosque. Okay. Do you have any questions, Nicole? Um, I guess for the teachers, if there's anything that you'd improve for Universal School, what's something that you think that should be changed or added to make Universal School just really stand out and offer great services for the students? Um, I think uh, the question which you asked previously that uh, is it open for non-Muslim, that would be a great achievement if we have mm -hmm. admission, if uh, non-Muslims do come in because uh, it will give the opportunity to uh, students to interact, to understand the feelings of each other, to uh, share, uh, you know. So I think that will be a great achievement if uh, more students come in. Maybe with um, Ray being on the team of the Universal School, maybe that has opened the doors to accepting other faiths to this Universal School. That would, that would, that would be great. Um, yeah. It's been a great experience for me uh, as far as a I feel like every time I walk in the door, it's a cross-cultural experience mm -hmm. is going on. Uh, and I have, I've gotten a lot out of it. Uh, I really have, having, uh, before starting teaching, uh, really had not been involved with any sort of Muslim community. Uh, so I've learned a lot, and social studies is a great subject to teach. Mm -hmm. uh, Sister April was talking about the diversity of our students. Uh, we can touch on a lot of differences that they've experienced uh, and I have, can talk about my experiences and look at social studies from a lot of different ways uh, which really enriches uh, so my classroom. Can you touch more on the children's exposure to cross-cultural differences? We, uh, we look at current events. I like to do current events in my classroom. Uh, with the recent uh, things going on in North Africa and the Middle East, mm -hmm. and many of these students having come from uh, those areas, we get a unique perspective okay. uh, on what's going on in those areas, and it's, it's been great. It's been great for our class. And are the students interested to know about what's happening currently in the Middle East? And yes. You know, do they ask a lot of questions? <laughs> yes. And, well, uh, if we you know, get what are the questions <laughs> they have? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, if we get started on, <laughs> on those <laughs> topics, there's uh, no problem keeping the conversation going. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> there will be no end to it. <laughs> no end. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that the school does. It, it, it develops a sense of a uh, Muslim American. It really helps them feel like there's a niche for them there in the school. And I think that, um, you know, maybe back in the 80s and the 90s, it wasn't so much of an issue. But after, you know, post 9 11, they feel kind of lost about what it means to be Muslim and what it means to be American. And okay. I think the school provides them that opportunity Great. to we find that. We can touch on that when we come back right after these messages. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to continue with Sister April. I would like to ask you about your experience as a parent of Universal School with your son attending there. Um, as a parent, I've been very, very happy with Universal School um, because I feel it's an environment where my f son feels he belongs. Um, we had the experience where he left Universal School for a year um, and went to the public school, and he asked um, at the end of that year if he could come back mm -hmm. and some of his experiences in the public school um, were very difficult for him and you know for example he was called terrorist in the hallway mm -hmm. um, you know people made fun of him and his family um, and for him that was very hard coming from an environment where he was accepted for who he was um, so he asked to come back, and I think the fact that, you know, the other students pray like him, the other students, you know, fast during Ramadan, you know, um, they have shared holidays, he has that sense of belonging. And so, you know, he, he really missed it being in the public school and, and, and came to appreciate it. So that was good. Okay. How active are parents in connecting with the school and helping? 
I think the parents are very active and we try to promote that. Um, as Kathy said earlier, we have a mandatory kind of volunteer policy um, where you can, you know, do things from home if you want to, um, or you can come in and, um, you know, do things, be part of the science fair organization or be part of, you know, doing box tops from home. So we really try to um, involve the parents. We have a very active PTA. So we really try now, to. Now, do you have volunteers with Universal School who are affiliated in any way? Like they don't have children or members of the family or anything? Do you find a lot of people who just like to volunteer just because we they have, believe in the school? We have students um, who, who volunteer who are not necessarily affiliated with the school from like UB, um, you know, um, so. And I Tanisha's. How is, good relationship yeah. with how is their college. experience been? If are they from? Non-Muslim backgrounds who are coming in? What yeah, has they been are Muslim. Both. Are, yeah, had both yeah. non-Muslim and Muslim, yes. They usually come back. We've had a couple of volunteers who didn't need to do any more service hours and they would come to the school and want to volunteer. They felt like they were learning. Mm -hmm. They'd have to take us in Arabic class, <laughs> take us in this <laughs> class. You no, know, but they were, um, we enjoyed their um, participation and they, we felt like they were walking away with something as well. Okay, great. Um, I guess I want to draw a question for the teachers about any kind of challenges that you felt like teaching and um, universal school, um, specifically um, for um, Rayana, you teach science and technology, and you know, bringing up what do you teach about evolution? What have you kind of, how have you handled that? <laughs> the challenges, I don't think I'm very comfortable. Like uh, generally, there I don't find any challenge. I'm very comfortable, and uh, I feel good. And uh, actually, I'm educating myself also while teaching. And as far as you talk about evolution, I d did ta uh, teach evolution about evolution according to the uh, New York State uh, uh, syllabus and curriculum. But um, I opened this question to the students. Uh, like, I asked them, there were project with which they had to research on. Mm -hmm. And one of the components was what Quran says about uh, uh, evolution. And then I have just you had students who've kind of was like, I don't want to learn this. My parents told me this isn't true. And how have you dealt with yeah, that? We if did have debate. Okay. And like we made groups and we talked a lot about it. But then uh, I told them that uh, we need to listen to different opinions, different uh, people, what they want to say about different things. And uh, they are free to have their opinion according uh, to the thoughts and research and uh, the components from Quran, what Quran tells about it. So uh, it was like I didn't tell them, okay, you have to study this and this. It's, it was not that. This, this uh, uh, section, it was a little different. And it was like open uh, discussion. Okay, and uh, in the end, yes, okay. they had to give their opinion that okay. uh, what they think. Great. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Sister Kathy, if you looked at yourself when you first started the school, would you imagine that you would be here now where you are? And where do you see yourself in five years? No, I definitely didn't picture myself here in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, in terms of, um, you know, when we started the school, I had no intention on being a principal or an educator for that matter. I was a board member. And uh, things had, as, li as life goes, things change. And uh, April and I stepped in. And, uh, and it just kind of stuck. And so I went back to school and, and, um, and, and got my degrees and certifications in education and whatnot. So it wasn't where I initially had planned, and, and that's how life pretty much goes. Uh, but in terms of uh, where the school is, um, you know, I'm very proud to see where the school is right now. Um, I, I was a lot younger then, so I had big dreams, and I wanted a lot of things happening right away. And then, you know, the reality hit, and, and I realized things go a lot slower than I had hoped. <laughs> I had hoped we had 12th grade by now. It's not been done. We, mm -hmm. we realize that five years later that, you know, ten years ago, I should say, it's, it's a lot different than it is. It's, it's just it's a lot stronger, uh, foundationally. Well, I have to say that we are an accredited school. And mm -hmm. so that was a big yeah. thing for us, yeah. um, to be able to say that we have passed or meet certain expectations. Um, and Kathy was a, a, a large part of, of pushing that, I think, that, ener that young energy mm -hmm you know, really um, brought a lot of different um, segments of the, the community together because it was a community effort. And so I think that's one thing that we are very, very proud of. 
Okay. Five years and that we want to be accredited still. <laughs> we hope to have our high school. Um, okay. That would be our, our dream to have our high school and, and see our school connected um, uh, in our community, network with our community in such a way where Universal is a very commonly known school in Western New York. Okay. I guess that leads to my last questions that, that I would like to pose to everybody, which is if there is one thing that you would like the community to understand about Universal School, what would it be and why? And anyone feel free to answer. Uh, unity and diversity. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. are one. Mm -hmm. There are so many different cultures. We are one, and uh, Alhamdulillah, we are heading towards progress. We are progressing. And, and I think we also think. are really stressing that our students are American Muslims, mm -hmm. and they have um, a lot to offer the community, um, and we want them to be involved in the community, and. Um, we really, we really focus on that. So they, they have that Muslim identity, but also they have to give back to the community, and they're a vital part of the community. Mm -hmm. Especially in the times that we're in right now. Okay. They need that. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Um, this concludes our program for today. We would like to thank our guests for participating, and please stay tuned for more Olive Bench programs coming soon. Please also view our YouTube channel listed under WNY Muslims. Thank you. We use westernnewyorkmuslims.org to be connected. For reviews on the latest restaurants and movies. To use Western New York Muslims Classified to sell my old school books, DVDs, and old clothes. To have a place to expose those who are intolerant of Islam and to commend those who portray it correctly. To increase my deen or faith. To learn more about the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. To find great information on Islamic scholarship funds. To have open dialogue with Muslims and non-Muslims in the community. For the prayer time. To ask an imam important questions about my faith. To learn about Islam. To be updated on births, deaths, and marriages in the community. To find great support groups that guide me as a new convert to Islam. To be informed about the latest upcoming events in the community. To find great local halal restaurants and food markets. For helpful information for new residents of Western New York and to express yourself creatively with blogs, articles, pictures, any sort of multimedia you want. If you wish to become a user to get connected to the community, please register at www.wnymuslims.org. Connecting communities through diversity, awareness, and service. We hope this website is useful and encourages the community to stay together.